right? 21 sites for Carl Franklin's Blazer Roadshow. We were super lucky to be the third here in Philly. Andy Schwamm has joined us, and Carl, thank you so much You're welcome. for being here on the Dev Talk hey, Show. Hey, you know, as long as I'm here, you know what I really hate? Product placement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, well, you know what? You talked for over two hours, yeah. so certainly throats probably might be a little dry. Mm -hmm. That's all right. You but, should try singing for three hours oh, right. yeah. in a band. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You told us a little about your band tonight and the yeah. band uh, Booker app, which you yeah. used to demonstrate Blazer. So, yeah. you know, um, you, I, I feel like you've been excited about Blazer for a long time. I have, yeah. yeah. So um, the interesting thing is, is Microsoft has always said Blazer is, is a SPA framework, and I think it's fair to say it's the first ASP.NET SPA framework. But what struck me is you very quickly after that said it's the most productive you've ever been. Absolutely. So what is it about that? As a web developer, it's the most productive environment. So uh, I've done manual websites, I've right. done vanilla JavaScript, I've done ASP.NET Web Forms, I've done MVC, I've done all of that. Right. And, uh, and I've done SPA frameworks, you know, I've done Angular, I've done Knockout, I uh, got a, my feet in React a little bit, haven't done Vue, but this is the most productive way that I've ever written a web application in my life, mostly because all of the goo of tr uh, communication between client and server is just not there. It's right. just markup and code. You didn't even see it. When you showed the see. demo today, you said, where's the, where is it? Where's the signal? You know it's signal R, but where right. is it? Right. Yeah. When the, and so people cool. always want to know about the details, but they didn't show up on the screen. You know, the only way they showed up is if we pulled up the browser tools looked at the network tab and saw the traffic going back and forth. Right. That's about, you know, that's how you know it's working. <laughs> yeah, it just yeah. yeah. Cuz we've done some hands-on labs here Andy and we've done some shows here demonstrating Blazor and people always the first thing out of everybody's mouth they want to talk about WebAssembly. Right. And I personally have been kind of of the let's settle down a little bit because yeah. that is all melted away. Mm. Uh, as a developer, you're not going to see anything about WebAssembly, SignalR, WebSockets, any of that stuff. You get mm. to concentrate on this Right. It's abstraction, but it still feels very web-like. It's not so abstract like WebForms was. Right. Yeah, it's not. And it does a lot of what WebForms was good at, which is, you know, rapid development, you know, not a lot of ceremony, uh, abstracting away all the details of how things go around. And then, you know, when you hit the wall with WebForms because you have view state like, you know, this, and you've got session data that needs to go in a SQL server or now you have you know bigger problems. So comparing web forms to Blazor, it's like a breath of fresh air. I mean, it's like the, you you don't even have the the code complexity and the markup complexity and the binding complexity of web form. It's so much easier. Yeah, it just kind of works. Just yeah. works. That's the thing. It it just works. It just works. You, like you didn't <laughs> write that much code tonight, you know, or show that much code right. tonight. Like there wasn't that much code to show. But yeah. yet, it's it feels real. Now, there's a couple. The one thing that kind of gets me though, the flip side of all this, like this familiarity stuff, is mm -hmm. like, I I get a little twinge, like when you go, well, it's in the code behind, and part of my brain says, no, 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 we don't do that yeah, anymore, yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, and the bindings, seeing the um, seeing the like on event click kind of things. I said, no, right, no, right, my right. brain wants to fight against that. Sure, but I think. That that's because it used to not be good, you know. Like I need to untrain my brain. I think. Well, here's no. I don't think so. I think that's a good reaction for anyone who lives in the MVVM world, right? Because you do want to decouple all of that logic from the events, the event handlers, the UI, basically mm -hmm. that fired it up. That's what MVVM is all about. But I think it's a mistake to talk about Blazor and require people to immediately get into the MVVM mindset. We need to know what Blazor is and what it does first, and you know the code behind the click events and all that stuff, really, it, it just, it resonates with enterprise developers, right? It must, because so many of them, enterprise developers, are used to writing that, mm. that code, right? Yeah. And so from them, it's a seamless, right. it's gotta be like almost a seamless transition. Yeah, well then once, you know, the MVVM pattern works really well in Blazor. Yeah, and again, to, you, you mentioned you it today. Walk. 
You have to walk up to it. You have yeah. to be ready for it. Yeah, I like MVVM, so I'd like to. I'm looking forward to sort of for me taking that next step. Yeah. And seeing taking that journey along right. to MVVM, you know. And there's stuff that I didn't even mention, like the mobile binding. The, wait, there's more? There's more. There's stuff that Microsoft is working on. One of them is called mobile native bindings. And so this expands the, the this gets people into the uh, Xamarin. So okay. you can actually bind to the Xamarin. Uh, what am I trying to say? Xamarin bindings. I haven't yeah. done it, so I don't have the lingo in my head. So, but you can actually write Xamarin apps okay, with Blazor yes. using the UI model of Xamarin and the code behind right. of Blazor. So this didn't come up uh, when we were t when you were talking upstairs, but you know the Blazor model has been abstracted sufficiently so that it can run it client with WebAssembly, which is what everybody's talking about. Right. Oh my God, let's see the WebAssembly. Yeah. But then you also talked about the advantages, pros and cons that you got to weigh Pros and cons of both. Of running it on server. Yeah. But you just mentioned, and I know this is an experiment, mm -hmm. I don't think anything's been announced, Yeah. but because of how they built this, it could theoretically be something that you build a mobile app with. For example, if you're a React dev, you might be thinking React Native. Right. It would be taking this Blazor and saying, hey, I could do this on yeah. top of Xamarin. And there's another experiment that I think I've heard Steve Sanderson talk about. An experiment is You're the key word. Web window? Right? Is web window. Web yeah. window. Web window, you can think of it as doing uh, everything that... Um, like Electron. Electron yeah, yeah, does, yeah. except instead of like this, much memory, uh, it's going to take like this. Yeah. Right? yeah. A .NET comp focus on Blazor was last month. Yep, and right. so now it's on channel nine, and you can see a full day of videos and concentration on all the little topics we started just diving into here, whether it's authentication or unit testing mm -hmm. or the future of it, like web window, you know, and, and, and the, all the stuff we didn't get to talk about upstairs. But that not, wasn't the point. I really appreciated how upstairs, you know, it, with, in, with the user group, he said, let's focus on you getting to understand. Yeah, that's right. Right. And so, um, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. And so just like how Microsoft says, you know, that Blazor is the way forward, especially like they even try to say, like, maybe if you're coming from web forms, they say the same thing. Like a lot of people ask us, well, what do you do? Where do you go with WCF? And I think I've heard that, that what they're trying to say is, well, maybe take a look at GRPC. GRPC and I wonder yeah. what you think about GRPC. Yeah, I think it's great. I actually was productive with that, too. There's a GRPC uh, binding for Blazor. And uh, mm. Steve Sanderson showed this off. <laughs> And I was able to, within about a half an hour, implement a chunked uploader, binary file uploader, with a progress bar and everything. And it just was, again, one of those really simple, productive moments where I just was like, oh my god, it took me. I, I had to hire somebody to do that right. in JavaScript. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I would too, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't figure it out. This is just so clean and so productive. And, and the thing I was saying while we were frozen there, some guy came up to me last night in New York, and he said, you know, I'm a Vue, I'm a Vue developer, and uh, uh, you say you've never been more productive with Blazor. I have never been more productive with Vue. Like, are you kidding me? Like, Vue and like this, and you got your this and your stack. And I'm like, look, you do you, right? Yeah, right? You do you. Like, if that's working for you, that's great. And, you know, the Angular people, I don't care if you're doing React or, or Angular or Knockout or whatever, if it's working for you, continue doing it. Right. There's no reason to jump ship. But the fact is is that there are tons of enterprise developers out there who grew up on WinForm, Windows Forms, and VB before that, right? And this is a power builder, right? They've been using these tools to build applications inside the firewall, or maybe B2B or B2C, whatever. They need a solution that is easy and not so technical that it's distracting from them to to get to their goal of their business goals, right? And yeah. that's what Blazor represents to me. What's neat about it is what, what you just said, but add to that, it's a good solution. Like it's not just some like, well, right. we came up with a way for them to move along, Yeah, but it's, it's like a it's junk. Right, it's not a band-aid. This is, this mm. is a good solution. You know, it's a great right, solution. So SMF says, us dark matter devs. You know, he shouts yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, right. He dark shouts in a yeah, celebration. Good, good and the then we also got the question that said, a lot of times you ask your guests, what are the gotchas? And so somebody wanted right. to turn it around, Contrive DX says, what are the Blazor gotchas from Element Focus? I'm not sure if maybe he was referring to something. Can we do everything? Can we file upload, drag and drop? You talked about how you implemented file upload with gRPC. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, um, so the gotchas. The gotchas are, it's not available till May. Right. Like it's not baked till May. No. And um, get better and better, though. Yeah, like, like the element focus thing, right? There isn't a focus method on, on elements that are Blazor UI elements, right? But that doesn't mean that you can't get around that with a little right. interop, right? Which right. I showed, actually, yeah, tonight. Yeah. So. And someone's going to package that up and make, a, make something out of it. Right. Like, Maybe our our sponsor from today, yeah. you know, you know Express. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if they're going to. do Actually, this. last time I talked to Steve Sanderson, I actually took his workshop at NDC London, and uh, he and Ryan Nowak did a two day Blazor workshop. It was great, and it was a cool thing it was. Just... Oh wow! It was just like Peach. Yes. I got a question. And right. it's Sanderson, so you're getting right, right from the. Yeah, you know. and so they said, yeah, we'll probably bubble up those things yeah. and, and explore that sure. stuff in the. Of course, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't right? They've been going light speed since he showed off a prototype a couple of years ago to yeah. get to this. And so I think one thing, like you mentioned, is, is we're here, we're able to do this, we're able to have Carl at Philly.net and then also on the Dev Talk show, thanks to Dev Express, who has UI controls for Blazor yes, that are and free, free right now. Yep. And you should take a look at those because you showed us a Google Calendar or, a, or an Outlook Calendar type that was scheduler slick. that was done. That was slick. <laughs> and did you see the markup? Yeah, it's had like me you hello on that page one. of code yeah. and, and it was done. It's like, like a page of code ready and you're to done. Go. Exactly. Right. So, you know, yeah. that's great to see that our friends at DevExpress are doing that and they're making, I think it was 21 dates possible for you in the US. Yes. I'm wearing so, my legacy gonna be Dev Express code. I don't know if that's on my <laughs> eat, eat sleeping sleep code. code. This yeah. is the best shirt ever. Uh, and I, and I, I can't got, believe it's still like not faded. I, I, like, at some point, I got a bunch of them, and so I can pull out a new one. Every, uh, you know, I go to these events and stuff. You know what else I want to mention? Uh, thanks to our sponsors, but also, um, you mentioned. So this was a great show tonight when you were here, and we got what two and a half hours of going through mm. this. But there's so much more. There's so much. And more. you mentioned that you have you're doing like a workshop. Yeah. So when when's that? And do we have a website for that? Uh, yeah, sure. Blazer.appvnext.com. So this is, I started this a uh, few months ago after I, after the aha moment of Blazor, I'm like, everybody needs to know this. Right. So I just sent out a tweet. I set up, put up an Eventbrite. I was actually on my phone on Eventbrite on the porch of my <laughs> favorite bar, sipping a glass of wine and actually creating an event, you know, and I created an Eventbrite event and I want to do a one day workshop where we build an app together. It's over Zoom. Okay. First one I had like thirty six people. Right. You know, thirty six people. Thirty six people. So that's I, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So I built a hands on lab for it. You know, where we could build the app together, and it's the Band Booker app. So, so you get to see more of the details of that. Are we? If we were attending that, um, we have the code. We're cutting and pasting, but yeah. we're we're getting our hands in but there. You're right? getting your hands in on it. Yeah. That's the only way to I think exactly to really learn it. Like you were showing stuff today, and there's a few things where I'm like. I get that he says it's simple, yeah. but I'm not going to really grok it until I get my hands in right. there. So an event like this, I can get my hands in there with your help. Yeah. So I do like a file upload for pictures. You know, you do the for file the upload. Bio. Okay. Yeah. We also add a SignalR hub to do real-time collaboration. Oh, that's great. So if you and I are editing the same musician's bio at the same time, you'll see the oh, keystrokes man. like, and it won't overwrite mine with yours. And, and you're getting all that done in a day? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So they can go, anyone can go right to event. This February 24th. February 24th. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's on a Monday. So it's on a Monday. Like so it's a work day. For, well, you know, Mondays are easy for people to get yeah. off to go do training. That's yeah. basically. Well, yeah. but I mean, to that, to my thinking, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking about these things. Right? I'm not taking a day off to go do that training. I'm going to yeah. be in my office. You're going to be in your and office, And my yeah. boss is paying for that. Right. Because that's a productive work day. Absolutely. Right? So yeah. it's not coming out of my pocket. I mean, even at that price, sure. I, what I just saw, I, I, I guess I would. Yeah. I don't know. Is it 325 Yeah, I don't get what the 99 is. The but 99 yeah. bucks is if you can't go and you just want to download like a previous ah, session's okay. video right, from the right. day okay. and the materials, the, right. the, the on lab, so you can okay. do that. So in the background, will music to code by? Is that playing in the background? Yeah. 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 Well, no, but <laughs> but, idea, right? but I do give away uh, a free music to code by for every. Oh, yeah, so. and I see music oh, to code by. Those are those are uh, they're, you have a specific time limit for those. Like you want minutes, them to be yeah. twenty five minutes. Or, yeah. Is that trying to follow along with Pomodoro? Pomodoro. Okay. Absolutely. So it's it's kind of the amount of time that I guess you you can be in the zone. Is that what that's about? Well, sometimes I can be in the zone for hours and hours. Sure. But the idea with Pomodoro is you you measure time and things that you're going to do in terms of Pomodoro, in terms of 20 blocks. And so you only say, for the next 25 minutes, this is the goal I want to achieve. 
afterwards you take five minutes to that too much little try to time it better and that way you know you can start measuring work that you have to do in terms of 25 minute blocks rather than man hours which right. is kind of hard and in that time zone like we're on to a different topic which is cool right but uh, in that yeah. time zone I'm not checking email or anything, right? I'm like focused. Right. Oh yeah, right? that's All, the thing, right? The phone goes away, the email goes away. You, 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 you know, you put on some music or whatever, and you zone in, and you're you're in that code. Yeah, and nobody can disturb you. Like, and the I'm music's good designed that, so. to evoke that. It's not yeah. designed to to make you bang your head or, or no. listen along or sing along. It's, some people can do that. Some people I need can't. like raucous, like really no death metal and stuff in order to tune it out. Like, but I can't. I. So this is all based on some research that was done that showed that Baroque music that was played between 65 and 80 beats per minute, I think it is, when kids listened to that while they were trying to comprehend math, their comprehension was better. Really? And when they were doing tests, their testing score was better. And it was a randomized controlled trial. So, it, you know, that, yeah. and Baroque music has the quality of, you know, being... Right, mm. it's very repetitive yeah. and and often is tied up in neat little bows like da 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 da. You know, yeah. like it comes to goes to all these few things and then it comes to this end. and then it repeats. So it's not boring and it's not distracting. And so I figured if I could make music that had those same qualities but was more modern, you know, it had drum elements mm -hmm. and nice big reverbs and digital pianos and. You know, and just cool groove, chill kind of music. Maybe some guitar licks in there that wasn't too distracting. Then it'd be something I'd actually want to listen to. But it, it it does repeat, and there are it does it's not completely repetitive, but it is repetitive. I feel like and, now we're gonna be like, and now the next segment, Carl's gonna tell us how to rebuild a Chevy. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, what else no. can you do? You're yeah, a musician. No, no. Uh, uh, you know, you're a musician. I can tell you how you're to a use, presenter. I can tell you how to cook sous vide. <laughs> sous vide. Oh gosh. yeah. Oh, you like that stuff, right? Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. you've got like the you know the greatest uh, podcast in the .dotnet yeah. world. Uh, well, right? and you know, there's and a I'm lot not of... just saying like it really. It... Well, I, mean, I think we'd be remiss because a lot of folks they say to us when they come to watch the Dev Talk Show, they say I'm new to development, so mm. they may not know about right. .dotnet rocks. I know yeah. for folks Don't like, take it for like granted. us, yeah. we yeah. just take it for granted. Carl Franklin .dotnet rocks, but over 1,600 episodes. Yeah, and so we're talking about a podcast that started before YouTube, before Twitter, before Facebook, before iPhones, yep. before podcasts were even probably called podcasts. Before iPods. Before okay. iPods, so you were that's just awesome. Downloading it to your what was creative it? jukebox. We basically, or, or I just, just, in August 2002, we just record stuff and I had a page, a web page, where I had, here's this week's episode, here's this week's episode Man. in the description. And I had a training company at the time, so and I had yeah. a big mailing list, and I'd just say, hey, if you want to listen, go ahead and listen. Yeah. So that's how you promote it from your... I was yeah, curious yeah, yeah. to know how you got that started. Yeah, yeah. It's so hard to get these things started. Yeah, it is, especially now. Yeah. Because everybody's good at podcasts, right? Yeah. yeah. Podcasting is very popular. And you did yeah. the whole thing by yourself. The other guy really had nothing to do with it, right? <laughs> well, I did all the editing and all that stuff. <laughs> just picking Mark on Richard. Dunn was... I was picking on Richard. No, Richard's... no, no, no. But, <laughs> but Mark Dunn was the original yes. co-host. Oh, I didn't even right. know that. And you're right. Oh, wow. All he did was get on the phone and talk. <laughs> Okay. Right, and I did the editing. It's like and, me here. Yeah. <laughs> and when Richard came in, you know, when came, Richard came on the show at show 100, I think it was right. Okay. Way he figured later, yeah. 50 shows. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. You know? Second guy, Rory Blythe, lasted for 50 shows. The first guy lasted for 50 shows. And I can do that. Yeah. But I got to tell you a story about .NET Rocks. So sure. .NET Rocks came, uh, a, you know, up in through the .NET ecosystem, right? So yeah. listening to each of those shows, if you listen to them in succession, you are getting the history of yeah. .NET. Documented. Documented. In real time. In real time, yeah. right? If you have that kind of time, <laughs> it's a real history lesson. Yeah. So at a certain point, every, you know, everybody was concerned that the web was eating .NET, right? And why are you know are you going to call this .NET Rocks anymore? Maybe you should call it JavaScript oh, Rocks, God. right? Yeah. When we came yeah. out of Build, I think it was what 2011, 2010, uh, Build 2012, maybe Windows 8 Build. Windows 8 yeah, Build. It was like yeah. 2000. I don't know. I, remember. Remember. Yeah, I think right? it was. Trying to block but out Windows we 8. went there, and there was nothing about .NET. It was yeah. all WinJS. That's, that's and, the one. Right. Right. That Everybody came one. out of that going what? Yeah. And, but you know. Us being who we are, we had to follow the trends and the topics that our listeners wanted. So we couldn't be doing, you know, 
uh, VB.NET WinForm stuff, and we couldn't be doing WebForm stuff so much anymore because everything was kind of moving to MVC, JavaScript frameworks, and we, we talked about that. We talked about new languages. Yeah. We talked about uh, methodologies, domain-driven design. We talked about Agile a lot. Uh, and I say we. We interviewed people who yeah. talked yeah, about yeah. those That's things. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah. And so what ended up happening was the companies like DevExpress, Telerik, and these enterprise tool vendors who sell to the enterprise, they weren't getting as much bang for the buck anymore yeah. because, you know, pe those people stopped listening, frankly, to .NET Rocks. It wasn't it was, for them anymore. It wasn't yeah. for them anymore, right? And so that's why I feel that Blazor is a real opportunity to yeah. get back, to get those listeners yeah. back. Oh, that's cool. Because we want to talk about Blazor a lot. Yeah. 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 And we want to talk about how to do all these things in the, within the context of Blazor, right. all these new modern technologies and techniques. Right. It's a web development model that speaks to ASP.NET developers. Yeah. I mean, it's not that it's not that the team hasn't been providing templates for Angular Plus, Vue mm -hmm. Plus, React Plus, but it was always you're going to you're going to live in that tool chain on the front end yeah. and then you're going to come back and do some ASP.NET web API on the back end. Right. And now like what you showed tonight, yeah. It's hey, we're kind of back. Yeah, we're, we're back, back to we're being back, not, and not just we're back. We're, we're back in visual, back. That should we're be back in Visual race. Studio. Blazer. We're, we're back, baby. We're back in Visual <laughs> Studio, putting the visual back in Visual Studio because all of right. that was going away. Yeah. The visual back. In it visual was. Studio. It was. Oh, I got to switch out to Atom to do my Angular. Right. right? I know right. VS Code yeah. came along. I got a question for you guys. Yeah. Somebody was. We were just talking to somebody, a friend of mine in Boston, who is in the .NET community, who says in Boston there doesn't seem to be a lot of of uh, embracing of .NET. And the number one reason is because it's not open source. Mm. What do you mean? Is that like, so they is there a, does .NET source? have still have that reputation of being Windows to the point where people who are making decisions on what platform to use won't even, they don't even know that it's know. open source. I mean, it's the same everywhere. people that still say it costs so much money to, to you know, well, I got to spend money to, to develop a .NET yeah. app. I mean, I've heard that Visual from people. Studio, right. Thousands of dollars. Thousands right? of dollars. For I did everything Studio, right? tonight in Visual Studio Community, community which yeah, is free. Which is free. Yeah. And then right. if and you, you need a, a free and a completely free license solution, you got VS Code. So people still feel that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think there's I think there's gonna be those people. Sure. sure. Uh, that just don't want to hear like a new message. They don't they're not But I think it's really up to us who are in the know and you know that, hey, you know what, .NET runs everywhere right? right literally that it is the open source it is the open source platform yeah i mean yeah, right? .NET loves linux or whatever that is microsoft yeah, loves microsoft linux yeah linux. You can, if you google you you could google or bing satcho microsoft is back and i promise you you will see the image and he's even got his fit i promise right. that's the one that'll come up i'm not even going to do it you do it <laughs> you watching right now you do it it'll be the first one that comes up just like just like SMF says Microsoft is back. Microsoft, yeah, SMF, thanks. Um, and IntelliJ is $500 a year, he says right there. I, yeah. I don't know, I guess it's... One of the things I always thought was strange about that, going back to your comment, yeah. I never cared that .NET wasn't open source. Right. I, I didn't get that whole thing. Right, I mean, right, I right. guess maybe I'm old. I don't, I don't know, yeah. but it didn't matter to me. Now, right. don't get me wrong, I like that it's open source and that there's community involvement. I, I like all mm. those changes. But to me, I'm like... There's a company that's building it, and I, I can trust them. Like right. I, I didn't, I still don't quite get that full argument that it has to be open source. But I'm not arguing because the changes have been awesome. Mm -hmm. They have been. I mean, I just like coding in C sharp. Yeah, and I coded in VBnet before that. Yeah, yeah. I started .NET. In I never, I never really did VB .NET. But a I lot mean, of folks right did. C -sharp. I came from Java. I mean, so look, it was an easy. It was a trend. VB six, the army of developers. Oh, the yeah. most widely used language six in the world. Million DB, yeah. Six million DB. And developers. Microsoft took the gamble of saying, yeah, we're going to bring you along to something else. Really? So that's why VB.net yeah. existed. And it oh, was very that. Important. oh, yeah, right. Yeah, it was yeah. extremely important to have that. And it's kind of unfortunate that um, .NET Core will not support VB. VB.net is not .NET Core. And .NET 5, going forward, VB.net is not. Hmm. I like well, the new. I, I like the new thing though, where .NET Core is just. I don't like to say it is the .NET framework because that sounds That's, like confusing because we have right. framework That's and we have core. Framework, yeah. But pretty soon it's just gonna be .NET again. It's just again. .NET yeah. again. Yeah. Right, right. We can get back to yeah. just having .NET, yeah. and uh, it's great. Well, 
I mean, you spent a lot of time with us. You spent a lot of time talking upstairs. Yeah. I think if we could leave it with one more thing is just, you know, like we were talking about the 1600 episodes, but through this timeline where the rest of the internet grew up with podcasting and broadcasting, mm. how, how did you keep .NET Rocks true itself that I feel like I listened to an episode today, doesn't sound that much different from episode one, but yet you still persevered through everything that's happened with social media and, and, and noise from all kinds of directions still to be the .NET beacon. What does that mean to you? You know, we just don't pretend to be people we're not. If, you, if Richard Campbell was here and we were having a conversation, it might as well be a .NET. I okay. mean, we are literally just turning on the microphones, mm -hmm. talking to people, see what happens. Rarely do we have an edit point where we're like, you know, sometimes, you know, we're 45 minutes <laughs> in and the, and the guests will say you know, something and end with a period and then a long pause. It's kind of like, I guess feels we did. done. Yeah. Right? You know, okay. <laughs> right. And we say something like, you know, is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, no. I think we covered it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you don't hear that. We take that out. But pretty much, it's just a natural conversation. And so, I've, natural conversations are the easiest thing to be consistent at. Mm. Because yeah. You're to just be you. fair, I think, it's, I think it's what the three of us have said following your example is let's just have the conversations that we would have. In the parking lot. Right. That's what this show is. That's what we're trying yeah. to do with the Dev Talk Show. Like, let's right. just continue yeah. talking about it. And then some basic things like microphone technique and yeah. not <laughs> not speaking over each other. You know, somebody's really excited, you let them interrupt. You yeah, know, just little things. Trying to learn. That's hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> oh, I said I was going to kind of be quiet on this show. Well, and I'm, we're <laughs> absolute rookies <laughs> at it. But thank you for the example. Thank oh, you for sure. leading the way. We've often said, I think, if not for .NET Rocks, where would where would shows like this be? I mean, honestly, you know, I think user groups get topics. They know who speakers are. It's been yeah. fantastic. So thank you for all of that. Oh, you're so welcome. And, you know, you spent several hours with us today. Oh, yeah. upstairs yeah. in Now here, it's so, scotch time. So, scotch yeah, time. we'll let you get going because uh, you're on the road again. Yes. There's 21 cities in the North American part of this Blazer Road Show, thanks to Dev Express. Yes. Don't forget to go to Dev Express and check out the free Blazer tools. You get the free awesome scheduler, the free awesome data grid with like a less than a half a page of code. Yep. And they're production ready with themes. I saw yeah. themes. Well, it's Bootstrap, right? Yeah. yeah. You so just, you could bring your own theme. Bring your own theme. So Bootstrap experts, this is for you. You should check that out. And, you know, again, Carl, we can't thank you enough. Thanks oh, for you're being welcome. here. Yeah, thanks, for, really thanks for having me. It. it was great. It was great fun. All right. So don't forget, if you're watching this in the future, you can see everything that we record on the Dev Talk Show YouTube channel, which the easiest way to get to is video.thedevtalkshow.com. And if you are watching this in the future, leave us in the comments who won the, the NCAA tournament because maybe we can get a jump on that before it actually gets here. Otherwise, don't forget we're here Wednesday nights at 8, 8.30 p.m. where we're usually, we're often in that studio right there, but we tried out a guest format today. Tell us what you think in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you like this topic, like it, and uh, ask some questions. Hey, maybe Carl will come by and answer your question in the comments. Uh, but <laughs> otherwise, tonight, I want to thank our special guest, Carl Franklin, again. Make sure you watch .NET Rocks, or listen to .NET Rocks. Go to .NET Rocks.com. They have the same issue, Philly.net, that's D-O-T-N-E-T Rocks.com. Right? That's it. And Rich Ross, thank you for taking the production duties behind the, uh, behind the, the mix board. For Andy Schwamm, I'm Chris Gomez, and thank you for watching the Dev Talk Show.